Hello and welcome back to another Fido Daily. It's nice to have you here and we've got a very special episode today. We are playing against the rank one player, aka Kisei, uh, who's just come back from his PCS trip representing us uh, in the playoffs over there and he reached challenger on the Taiwan server, so he's absolutely the real deal. But what I'm going to show you is that even gods can bleed. With precise execution and sound fundamentals, you can beat anyone. So we've got a bit of a different format for you guys. Um, I know that a lot of people at home don't actually record their POVs, and uh, I was one of you guys for the longest time. Um, I would just download the replays, look at the replays, and, and kind of uh, make my conclusions from there. I think there's merits to both methods. Um, the benefit of uh, recording a POV is that you can see your clicks, you can see your intention, um, you can focus a lot more on your tethering, your spacing, and really improve your micro. Uh, but if you're trying to think about macro and getting your macro better and, and um, thinking about the overarching ideas of the game, right? Like the replay can help you a lot because you can toggle fog lines like this. If you're catching a dangerous wave, you could be thinking, oh, you know, is this actually safe or dangerous? Like, was this the right call? Did I just not get punished? And if you can just toggle this fog line, you'll know, okay, there's champions here. Maybe this was a bad call. Now here my Graves is pinging that he wants to play Raptors. So I simply just walk up here, make sure that we're all together, right? Because as long as you guys are all together, you have a triangle on someone, it doesn't matter who's here, if it's Belveth or uh, Volley Bay. A lot of the times there'll be a champion standing here. So if we all come out together, we can chunk them and secure the Raptors. But now I see that, you know, in the theory showed mid, so they're not stacking. Excuse me. So my goal just becomes stop her from walking this way, right? As long as I can walk this way first, if she's forked, forced to walk all the way around, I'm going to be first to the play. So that's really it. You know, when you when you have your teammates going for an invade like this, your goal is just to be there first. You don't actually need to go there and hit anyone. You don't need to contribute anything um, to killing Belveth. You just want to stop this guy from walking in, but try and do it in a way that doesn't ruin your lane. So here he's forcing the fight on me. I have to fight him. Um, I have to fight him to keep him there. I can't just leave and uh, you know let my teammates be on their own. So we ended up dropping two melee creeps there, but we got a nice trade. Remember, Ryze is one of the best level one champions because of the low cooldown on his E. It's 3.5 seconds. It also resets your auto attack, kind of. You know, you can go auto E. Um, now here I'm thinking Belveth would have done wolves into my raptors, but actually she invaded my raptors level one. So the idea was correct to place a ward whenever your jungler eats the enemy camps like this. You want to place a ward defending your jungler. Um, but unfortunately, I just missed the timer. Um, I made the wrong hypothesis. I thought that she would uh, play it safe and get one camp first instead of invading level one. Because if she invades like this and I actually saw her on a ward, she would basically die. I would just walk in level two to level one and I would not let her start my raptors. Uh, but that's okay. Um, overall, just keep in mind, I'm not hard pushing the wave. Okay, And this is really, really important because I know that... Look, Belveth is behind, so the normal gank window is 2.30, but because she started so late, you know, until three minutes I'm pretty much safe. So I don't feel any urgency to ward. And here we thought we could get the kill, and uh, we know that he has no flash, but unfortunately he ends up being a little bit too tanky. And uh, I haven't played Rise in a while, so a little bit rusty on the mechanics, a little bit rusty on my limits, but I think that's okay to go for. You know, it's okay to push your limits in solo queue, that's what it's all about. Keeps it interesting, keeps it fresh. Um, but the problem with this kind of playstyle where you play for the level 2 kill is if you don't get that level 2, level 3 kill, essentially in order to get that big HP lead to get all the chunks on him, I ended up dropping a lot of CS, right? Because I'm super focused, hyper focused on the trades. And uh, if you look now, I'm actually down 22 to 18 CS on a range versus melee, you know, and that should be happening. You should be up like 5 CS at this point instead I'm down 4. Uh, so that's uh, not a good spot to be in. We're also down our flash. So as soon as you get back to lane, you grab whatever low CS that you need to not drop it and immediately go to ward, guys. Make sure that you ward if you don't have flash, uh, you don't have TP, because this is a very high value death. When you don't have a TP on mid, you definitely don't want to be dying, especially in these kind of early level 4, level 5s. Now, you see I just pulled a wave. Uh, because I don't have flash, this is a great idea. Normally, you know, freezing in mid is not the best idea, but if you don't have flash, this is a way to keep yourself safe. Um, and I can see that uh, Nefiri warded my bot side here, she warded my raptors, so I'm actually considering involving my Graves in this play. It looks like Graves is already behind him, so I'm going to start pinging Graves uh, to gank mid here. Um, I kind of try and give him give him a few pings, and I'm starting the fight, I'm making myself look uh, appetizing, but actually I ended up pretty much getting the solo kill by myself. Uh, Graves helped out, we get an assist, and that was uh, all because of the freeze there, guys. So 
whenever you don't have flash in mid, make sure to freeze. And uh, if your jungle is kind of in the area, so I'm thinking if your jungle is at raptors, wolves, enemy raptors, or enemy wolves, he's kind of in this vicinity, just feel free to ping him, okay? Just just feel pretty free to suggest to him, hey, look, this guy's overextended. I know exactly where he's wooded. Um, I think you can get a gank off. And a lot of the time, people will be receptive. You know, if you if you have a good suggestion, just voice your yeah, just just voice your opinion, and and people will will kind of listen to you in the game. Now we can see the Fury is on, on my Raptors here. We saw her on a wood. So I should really be checking my Raptors, but uh, maybe uh, Belveth's on my Raptors. Maybe I should, maybe I, I don't feel comfortable uh, because my Graves did end up pathing down to Krugs. So I just kind of give away his camp for free. Now I see that they're, they're in the jungle. I start spamping in danger because I know that if the Fury is not on this wave pushing it, she must be in our jungle. So I'm just letting Graves know that I don't want to walk in here. This is a really crucial thing, guys. If you ever see the enemy mid-jungle uh, in your jungle together, so they linked up, right? So there's two champions here. Never, even if you have Rhizolt here, never ever walk down, okay? Because if you walk down here, one of the two things is going to happen. You'll, you know, you'll ping that you're on the way, so you want your graves to come in. If they're in this bush, your graves gets chunked. If they're in this bush, your graves gets chunked. If they're in this bush, you get chunked. But there's no way where you can win moving like this as mid jungle. If you guys are one one person on each side and there's two people here, there's no way to win. Okay, because whoever face checks first is going to get chunked, and then he has to run away, and that's another one v two for them. So you're basically giving them two one v twos in your jungle. Instead of that, we just push our wave. We guarantee that we're going to get a nice CS lead. If they cancel the play and the fury walks back to mid, we can stop her from walking this way, and we can get a nice chunk. Otherwise, you know, the way you should think about after the pushing the wave, so always push the wave first. Don't follow the roams. But after you've pushed the wave, what you should do is draw a line like this through the halfway of the map. And if you see that the majority of the enemy champs are past this line, so if they're pretty much between your, you know, tier 1 and your tier 2, then you can absolutely still follow. Even though this is a late follow, I can tell that, look, by the time I get to, to Scuttle, you know, uh, these guys at worst will be where Draven is, right? They can only move up so much. And I can kind of cut them off because I'm running, I'm running diagonally. Um, so, yeah, instead of getting the plate here, I see that they're just too far, too far up and we rise all down. And keep in mind here, you know, I'm not thinking about trying to get the most kills. This is a really important thing. Value your time, guys. I've got a turn, but it's just a single wave. Okay, so I don't have that long of a turn. So I ult here. Now, I'm not sure if Belveth has flash. I know Belveth has dashes as well. So I just go for the easier target. I know Renata has no flash. We just get the kill. Okay, all we want to do here is just get a kill. Get an assist for us and immediately run back to mid. Okay, it's important that you don't drop CS for these kind of roams. So as soon as the play is over, as soon as you get one kill, we're running back to mid for whatever reason. They didn't, they didn't leave. They decided to fight us. We pick up another kill, and uh, basically, when you when you're this low, um, what should you do? Should you base? Or should you actually go catch the wave? So just look at the wave. If this is a cannon, I'm insta-basing that, okay? Because I know that if I insta-base, I'll be able to get back without losing too much, and I'll actually get an extra turn because he's greeting and not basing on a cannon. Um, but because it's not a cannon wave, I decide to greed. Now here we have to be very, very careful. This is probably the easiest part of the game for him because we just got a bunch of gold in those skirmishes. We haven't spent our money. So we don't want to expose ourselves. We want to just grab the wave and uh, look to base on the cannon. I think I'm egoing him a little bit right now. I think the logic here was, I have flash, he doesn't. So I could look for a kill opportunity. Um, we end up seeing that our Graves is fighting Belveth, so we just hover him there. Just have a look if we can find anything. We don't find anything. And now we're basically just looking to recall on the next cannon wave. Uh, so Renata walks mid, uh, <laughs> doesn't realize that there's a wave coming, so she can't actually stun me. And uh, we try to get that kill. Uh, unfortunately, missed our last Q. And now it's just recall time, okay? Uh, unfortunately, it's not a cannon, but we're just so low that we were looking to base, but then again, uh, we decided that because he has no flash, we're going to try and cheese him. And this is the cheese that I talk about in my video. Have a look at the vision from the Fury. This is why I love replays, because you know I'm so close to him, but he just can't see me. Um, and this is the benefit of looking through replays instead of POVs. You can fine tune things like this. You know, By the time he sees me, I pretty much come out. As soon as he uses his dash, I come out. Now he gets the level up, so this is a little bit sketchy. He gets a level up and I miss my Q on his dogs. Uh, but we still end up getting the kill. That's what matters. And that's definitely a cheese that you can think about. You know, when I when I leave like this from his perspective, if you're this in the Fury here, right, you got to think about from the POV of the enemy. This rise is like 100 HP, 100 mana. You, you never expect him to stay. Um, oh, wow. He actually, his ward actually timed out there at the last second. That's very unlucky. Otherwise, I would have been spotted by this ward right here. 
Um, but regardless, yeah, think about this cheese. It's very, very effective. You won't be seen until you kind of come out from here, and at that point, it's already too late. A great way to, to get kills on Rise. Now, pretty much when I'm thinking about what to buy on Rise, you, you want to spend the most gold possible. So here, for example, I have 1,500 gold. Uh, a lot of the champions are threat, have a lot of threat. They're all diving champs, they're all kind of assassins or bursty champs. So I have 1,500 gold. What I could have bought there is I could have bought a Catalyst, but if I buy a Catalyst for my Road of Ages, one, I get back to lane a little bit slower, and two, I actually don't spend my 1,500, right? I'm only going to spend 1,300. So I'm thinking, how do I spend the most of my cash? I just insta-buy CD boots, then I press tab, and I look, oh, wait, they're all AD except for Volibear, and I'm not really encountering Volibear for the rest of the game. So whenever you verse AD Assassin mid, and AD jungle, just make sure you buy tabbies. Pretty much on every champion this works. I mean, on some mages you can say that if you have a defensive ability, uh, you don't have to do it. So I pretty much buy the most defensive items possible. I buy a ruby crystal, they're a burst team, I buy tabbies, they're all AD. Okay, so this is how you should be thinking about itemization. Make sure you spend all of your money, every single dollar, and uh, try to buy stats that are effective against what the enemy has, and not just blanket, okay, this uh, pro builds rise page has cooldown boots and he buys mana crystal first, you know, just kind of put that in perspective a little bit, maybe he bought those items because he's, he's in a mage matchup and he just needs the mana for prior, um, things like that. So we, we do an early TP to bot because we see that there's a play happening, um, we want to join in ASAP, we saw that our lane is coming down, and Belveth was not involved in this play. This is something you should also try and do on Rise, is make sure you cast your ult when there's, <coughs> excuse me, two kills to get. Make sure you cast your ult before you get the last kill. So you can see here, I uh, I come in here, and before Nefiri even dies, okay, before she even dies, I'm already casting my ult, you know, while my Q's in the air. So the faster you cast your ult, the better. And we end up picking up a few nice kills here. And keep in mind, you know, I'm not taxing the wave. You know, I help my Zeri push and just immediately base. This is a really, really common mistake. You guys have done this play. You've made a roam successfully, same as this roam. As soon as the play is over, your only job is one, does my bot lane have the wave clear to crash the wave? If they do, I should just immediately base. And if they don't have the wave clear to, uh, to crash, I'm just going to help them crash. But don't stay for another wave. Don't pray for a plate. Because you don't want to be here. You know, when the Draven and Renata come back, you don't want to be in that 1v2. You want to stay in your favorable mid lane. And I recall, I ended up grabbing Catalyst. Um, so that's really, really good for us. We got 10 Magi's, I mean, 10 uh, Dark Seal stacks. We pretty much have infinite prior. Uh, our top lane is losing, of course, against uh, Kiss A. Uh, but our bot lane is doing okay. So at this point, it's very, very important that you guys value your life. Okay, make sure that you're always leaning towards your jungler. Make sure you don't give away your life for free because you have not only not only bounty, but if you think about these stacks, if you die, you will lose five stacks. Five stacks is 20 AP, and that's actually 400 gold. So if you put this into perspective, when I die, I'm going to give the enemies 300 gold plus a 450 bounty, so that's 750 gold. If it's an assist, that's another 150, so that's 900. Okay, and I'm actually losing 400 gold worth of AP. So if I die here, the total gold swing is 1300. This is how much gold we lose for dying. But to put this into perspective, if you take a tier two, you get like a six, you know, you get about half half of that gold. So, so me dying right now would be the same as them getting two tier two towers. Okay, so if you put if you put that into the perspective, uh, into your perspective, and you actually think about your death like that, you'll play completely differently, and uh, you won't expose yourself. Now we just uh, we just keep pushing waves. We saw that our jungle is invading bot side. We kind of ping him that, hey. <laughs> Excuse me, Belveth is low. I just do one on the way ping, and uh, obviously this is the the great thing about the draft is that we picked a, a really easy setup champion for Graves. We just get the root down. Graves does his damaging abilities. There's no way for the enemy to get out, and uh, yeah, we just continue pushing every wave, continue pressuring our lane, making sure that we're not uh, risking too much. So here, this is a very risky play. Um, I feel like I have a turn to go bot lane. We have this 4v2 opportunity, but Belveth should also be coming off base. We don't know whether Belveth is greeting for our top camps because she killed our top laner or if she's running back bot to cover this play. So, you know, if, if it's a risk, if you don't have flash and you have this big type of bounty, try not to go for two plays in a row like we did. You know, we go to play, we got the play. The next step is always reset. Spend your gold, make sure you're as strong as you can be. Try not to do play, play into another play. That's that's usually just uh, a recipe for disaster. 
And we see these people in our jungle, so we feel a little bit uncomfortable. This is definitely a wave where we should uh, play safe because multiple champions could come out of here. They could abuse that same fog line that we did, right? They could they could try and abuse it. And you can see that they were looking for it. Um, and if we play too aggressive, if we try to get prior on this wave. So whenever you think about prior, guys, like just because you play a prior champ, like yes, I'm playing Rise into the Fury, and the Fury is 0 4, okay? But just because we can get prior, just ask yourself if I get prior here, what can we actually achieve? Is there an objective up? Cool, there is a Rift Herald. But if you get prior, can you start the Rift on this wave? Absolutely not. My top lane is basing, my jungle is basing, my support is at our inhib, you know, so there's nothing for me to get. There's no benefit to pushing this wave outside of just getting ganked. Like the only thing that can happen here on this wave is that I can die to a gank. So we're much better off just keeping in the middle, just last hitting with our Q, not exposing ourselves, right? And uh, waiting for our teammates to get back on the map. Once we have these two teammates back on the map, we can start to play the game again. So this is the way where we do want to play aggressive, right? Because all of our teammates are here, there's an objective. We just try and cut Belveth off there. That's a good, that's a good, uh, you know, trick for Rise players, right? You just kind of cast your ult. Um, so I cast my ult to tell Belveth, hey, if you keep going in the straight line, I'm going to catch you. So I know that she's going to come back into me, so I'm actually just going to walk out of my ult. You know, I'm not going to let her take me because otherwise I'd just get a, a chunked out by Volley Bear. And it's important to stay in the same formation, right? These kind of skirmishes, like we said in the jungle, the reason why when the enemy... Uh, mid and jungle are in your jungle you don't want to face check as a mid because even if you're both coming even if you know your graves is coming from here you're coming from here they're always going to get a 1v2 they're always going to get this triangle on you where they're both hitting you okay they're both hitting you as your as your teammate is not able to hit them right because you're not you're not together so whenever you're together like this this is even if this nefiri wasn't instantly dead or one hp this is very winning for us just because we're all together you know they have two people here one guy here one guy here they're never killing us they're never hitting us at the same time but we're all hitting them so it's important that you don't break this formation if i go here now it's suddenly a 1v1 1v1 here and they have a 2v1 and it might take them too long to kill this belveth in the 2v1 um so just stay in formation, keep the numbers up, keep the triangles up, alright? This is how you, you win skirmishes, by hitting the same person with multiple champions. And we end up getting a nice skirmish, we flash the Renata CC, pick up an extra kill, and go straight back to our wave. See how we're not going to rift, we're not trying to help our team, and this is not your job as a mid, okay? Your job is just to push mid lane, to hit the tower, to get prior, to get a good reset off, right? It's more value. It's more valuable for your team to just get a tempo reset off and be back on the map, be back with prior rather than make this camp five, ten seconds faster for Graves. So we greet for an extra plate. At this point, we just want to make somebody show mid. We feel pretty comfortable. Nobody can kill us. Really, there's only one champion that threatens us. That's Belveth. But we know that we've got phase rush plus our... Uh, two runes, so we're very very quick. It's 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 quite hard for Belveth to catch up to us. Now usually that would be bad. Okay, usually when you win a fight like this, you have a lot of gold. You pretty much just play for as much as you can. You know you have over a thousand gold. Just make sure you either base on a cannon or base when the enemy can't crash your wave. So this would have been a perfect base. So if I did not have teleport, I would absolutely base here on 1500 gold um, and just get back on the map because this is the next objective. We want to be on this wave ready to push, ready with prior. But whenever you have TP on mid, okay, whenever you're close to your TP, um, usually your second or third TP, you can do this. So around sort of like 8 minutes, 8 to 15 minutes, you won't be sidelining, right? Whenever your bot lane tower is still up uh, and your bot lane is still bot, you can absolutely just use your TP to get back to lane like this. Just greed your recall. You know, there I was able to greed for the actual tower, get the full tower because I greeted. Um, and uh, since I have TP, I can absolutely just crash this wave, uh, come back and immediately TP if we need to. Um, now we didn't actually end up TPing because our area already covered mid. So we go for this bot TP play, we see the Draven is overextended. We want to get behind him. Um, and we end up getting the kill. Well, we couldn't kill the Draven, Draven flashed out, but it was still a good look, right? We're just punishing their bot lane. We saw that the jungle was mid, so we knew we had the numbers bot. And we're now in kind of the right lane assignments, moving into the mid game. So we push the tower. Now, keep in mind, guys, whenever you push these towers, there's nothing affecting your mental stack, okay? There's nothing for you to think about. So just look on your map. There's no excuses to not look on your map here. And if you see, like, what is the threat to you? Who can kill me here? Guys, it has to be, like, Belveth, like, probably three champs like this. 
Like their bot lane cannot kill me because I could just run away. You know, I could just phase rush away and uh, disengage. So I know that they have to have three champions at least to kill me. So as long as I see three champions on my map, and we did see, right? We see both top, mid, jungle, all showing here. We know we're completely safe. So if you're completely safe, make sure you stand behind the tower, all right? So that their minions aren't attacking your minions, so that your minions buy yourself as much time um, and, and do as much damage to the tower, and you take the tower as fast as possible. And also you're, you know, you're here already, ready to push. A little bit faster and you can join your team in the play now here after i did this it was actually really important for me to hit this tower it's really really important for me to hit this tower and i'll put this in the perspective you can see that the draven here is um the draven here is not actually answering the bot lane because he's assuming that i've recalled but if i had actually hit this tower i can absolutely never take it right i'm playing rise it's one item you know i can never kill this tower so when you're thinking about gold this is a really really tough decision to make because this is guaranteed gold that i can get right now right gromp uh, there's no way first of all there's no way for me to join this play right i don't have tp i don't have uh ult so i'm not i'm never considering walking here because by the time i get here this, this play is over i'm not gonna get any gold from it so the question is do we hit gromp or do we hit this tower now normally you don't want to hit this tower because you expose yourself to a number of flanks okay and you can get collapsed on and you also don't have the damage to actually kill the tower so it's just you know if we're thinking would i rather get gromp or this much damage you'd rather get gromp because that actually gives you 100 gold right whereas this damage doesn't doesn't mean anything until you actually uh, get the tower so uh, but what i should be also thinking about is is my team going to fight here because if my team's going to fight here and i'm hitting gromp nobody's responding I i'm not making anybody show on the map Right? I'm not making anybody come to me, so I'm basically giving my team a 45. I'm giving my team a very bad fight, and if I want to play for Gromp here, then I need to spam ping my team back. I need to tell them, guys, nobody's responding bot lane. They, they have more people here. Just leave. It's all good. Give up the objective. So here my mistake was that I wasn't spam pinging my team back. I need to spam ping my team back before they commit into a play like this, and at this point, it's already too late. You know, they, they, They've decided they're going to fight, and... Uh, this is always going to be a bad fight because it's 5v4, right? But just if you look on the map, you know, if we if we kept that Draven bot lane, uh, we could have potentially also forced another person to reset. Maybe our team could have taken this fight if the Draven was there. Um, it's all a lot of ifs and maybes. Uh, but because we can't make it to our team and there's a fight going on, it's it's better to just play for the tower and draw the attention of at least one champion, okay? To give your team a, a fighting chance there instead of just playing for the Gromp, which is kind of meaningless. Now we go top, we see that Volibear was actually greeting for our camps. So as we're walking top here, we actually ping our graves. So I ping I ping the graves to, to check, he checks it. And uh, we just go for Volley. Uh, Volley has a big bounty at this point. He's playing full AP, so he's quite squishy. Uh, we chase him down and we get a really, really nice shutdown. But again, guys, as soon as the kill's over, what do we do? Do we walk in with our graves? No. Do we tax our Zeri? No. We just go back to your wave, okay? So every single time you get a kill, make sure that you have three people farming three lanes. Top, 80, mid. It doesn't matter which, which person's where, but make sure there's one person in each lane pushing it, okay? That is the best way to min-max after getting a kill. So we push the we push the wave. We tell our team, okay, look, uh, we've got a man advantage, and somebody has to defend this tower. And the Fury ends up TPing, and as long as you give your team enough of a warning, as long as you tell your teammates, you know, that this is what I want to look for, uh, they'll come and you'll pick up a very, very easy kill. And we, of course, are going to agree for the tower, and whenever you kill a tower like this, make sure you don't recall straight away. You know, even though I see there's a Rift Herald, I'm not worried about it. I know that as soon as I kill this tier 1 tower, you need to push the next wave, okay? You need to push plus one. You need to make sure that your minions actually hit the enemy tower and secure the bounce back, right? This is how you lose the least CS. So now we know that the next wave is going to bounce into us and we don't have to attend it straight away. We can actually go and, and join our teammates in a play because we've pushed that plus one wave because we know that, you know, this wave is going to be here. The next wave is probably going to be here and it's only the wave after that's going to hit our tower that we have to attend. So we have a minute you know, of time to waste. We can just go and, and, and do some, and flip some burgers. Now, we do pretty bad TP here on mid lane. I'm not really sure why I did it. Um, I don't really have my ulti, so there was no way for me to really catch up. But we see that they kind of, you know, cross this line of no return. We're already behind them, so we're just trying to flank. And you can see here, it's very, very easy. This is a mistake that people make all the time. You know, you're thinking, okay, Belveth is low HP. I don't want to waste my flash to kill this Belveth. You know, why would I flash? Let me save my summoners. But the problem here, guys, is what we said about the threat. So we said, like, who can kill us on side lanes? It's three champions, right? And one of those champions is Belveth, because she has a CC that we can't dodge, okay? So if Belveth knocks us up, 
we can get CC chained into, you know, Volibear stun, into Volibear W, into uh, Renata, Renata pull. So we, this is the biggest threat to us. Even though this champion is very low, her CC is the only reason we can die here. So flashing early to make sure that she dies before she can CC us, or making sure she can't get away, is basically making the skirmish winning. So even though, yes, I could save my flash, not saving it is actually what wins this fight. Not saving it is the reason why we can keep we can keep chasing. Now this was a little bit uh, a little bit psycho for me. Um, I obviously didn't know where Draven was. I just blindly altered, so I, I deserved to die there and lose my Magi's. I didn't, which is very very good. And we just immediately come back to top side. Now this is a good point here as well, guys. So uh, you know, even if you're feeling very strong, even if you're the strongest person on the map, you have to think about. Risk versus reward. So here I know where everybody is except for Volibear. I've pressed tab and I know that, look, I've got Ninja Tabbies, which doesn't help me against Volley because he's full AP. So even though I'm really, really fed, there's actually a chance that Volibear can kill me. If he has his ult, if he has his Ignite, he can absolutely kill me. So you have to be really careful. Um, don't don't get overconfident. You know, here I'm I'm, I'm, I'm hugging away from the threat. That I feel, I, I suspect that if Volibear is in this bush and I face check him and I lose half of my HP before I even press any abilities, I might actually die. So this is not a favorable fight for us. This is probably still a 50-50 because overall, if you look at our gold, you know, we're up a thousand gold on him. So if we lose, you know, a thousand gold is two ruby crystals, right? So if we lose two rubies worth of um, HP before the fight even happens, it's still a 50-50. But what do I have to lose? I have... 10 Magi stacks, and by the way, we did the math on the on the Dark Seal, right? 40, um, excuse me, 20 AP, 400 gold. If I die with Magi's here, I lose 10 stacks. That is 50 AP, guys. Okay, 50 AP is like almost a thousand gold. You know, blasting one's 850 for 45, so 50 AP is like 900, 925, 950 gold. So if I die here, I lose 1,000 gold, right? 700 bounty, 300 kill, 950 for the Magi's. So we're losing 2,000 gold for dying here. And if we kill Volley, what do we get? 300 at most. 300 if his kill streak is uh, is at zero, or maybe slightly even less, maybe like 270 if he if he just died before this. So it's really really important that you guys weigh the risk versus the reward. And just because you're the strongest person on the map doesn't mean that you should take every duel possible. It doesn't mean that you should face check every bush and just ego it. You know, here we push the wave, and we actually check the bush. And if we face check this guy here, you know, he will gladly fight us because he has 2,000 gold to gain, and we have 270. You know, it's. Uh, it's really important that you, you stay composed, but because we saw that he was going for that cheese, that he feels confident enough to fight us, we actually communicate to our Aatrox that we want to bait this, okay? Because if he was going on the first time, you know, if I overextend on this tower, of course he's going to go on me again. Like, he's already shown us his intent, the volley, when he was camping this bush. He's shown us that he wants to fight. So this makes this as a good play. This makes this a good time investment for my Aatrox because we know, hey, Volley Bay is going to fight us. And Volibear ends up jumping in. I think we would have killed him regardless because we were so fed, but it's just good to have Aatrox there to back us up. And uh, they ended up all collapsing on us. Not sure where my Aatrox is going here. He really needs to protect me uh, with my Magi. So what he needs to do is actually walk this way and give us vision, right? Because if one of us is going to die, it's you know it's better that it's the one for Aatrox. If he walks this way and, and they're going to chase him, he's always going to die. But if he walks this way and they're going to chase me, he can't protect me. Okay, So he's much better off going here because if they chase him, he's going to die the same, but if they chase me, he can at least stop them. You know, he can at least help me out here um, because I'm very, very fed and it's a really high value kill. But instead, he kind of plays for his own life. He's very, very much a beta. You know, he's just baiting me here. And, uh, but this is the nice thing about this matchup. So we actually, this is something you guys can do, right? Is play around their vision because you know that I know that Belveth is going to lose vision of me as I go in this bush. I try and walk in a straight line. Don't try to dodge it here because if you try to dodge it here, dodge his knock up, his CC, he's going to see it and he's, you know, he's going to just react. But you see, as soon as I entered the bush, I waited a second because I wanted him, he's expecting me to run this way, right? Because that's away from him. So he's dashing to cut me off. And he already, in his mind, imagined where I would be if I entered the bush and two seconds later, you know? He's basically predicting. He's, he's doing a prediction um, instead of actually reacting. And because we played with our vision, we actually came outside of the bush as soon as he went in. And uh, we focused in the Fury. And that's the great part about playing against the Fury. Uh, she can't cancel her dash uh, once she started casting it. So you can just spam all your abilities on Rise and get a nice combo off. We ended up dying anyway. And that's definitely the fault of our Aatrox not helping us out there. But it is what it is. And uh, the rule of thumb I always preach in my videos. You die top lane, where do we go guys? Bot. Immediately. As soon as you die top, you go bot. Vice versa. Because this is where there's no wards on the map. This is where... 
Where did I TP here? Oh, okay. So basically, um, I, I went bot lane here, and I knew that somebody has to respond. As soon as I saw Volibear, I immediately teleported to the Baron, uh, because I know that Nefiri greeted her for this wave, so she most likely based. And uh, Volley has no TP. So this is a great call if you're playing sort of a shotgun mage, if you're playing the likes of, you know, Cassio, or even if you're playing champions like Yone, you know, just any high DPS champ. Once you get your items, you can do this sort of I walk bot, pull one guy bot lane, immediately TP to Baron, and uh, pull the trigger. So that's a really good call. And knowing this is a 4v5, starting this up, we've got vision. We're ready to turn if we have to, but this looks like a finish. It looks like Nefiri is not new. Um, Excuse me, Belveth is not anywhere near. I do this blue trinket to make sure she's not there. We've got a ward covering this side. Um, so really, there's only one angle she can come from, which is here. She ends up showing in the mid wave, so we finish up the Baron. The Fury compensates, jumps in, tries to prolong the fight. But at this point, it's always losing for them, right? Their Volley Bear, the mess, the huge gold lead, 3,000 gold lead there. Uh, he's stuck bot lane. So they can't really ever take that fight. This is unfortunately a gift for them. They should instead be playing for this tower, right? To trade something back. Because the call was so good that there was no way to for them to make it there in time. Now we get the one kill and we want to force the chain feed. Like I said, we see that there's two champions here. We saw that Belveth is split off. They're all kind of separated. We've got five people here. So I decide to go for an ult. I know we have our Magi's. We also have our Arm Guard. Now it's only the Graves that takes it with me. And it's okay. It's okay for the Graves to die here. Because really they should all get cleaned up. Um... But again, look at this. As soon as the fight's over, my teammates are thinking, Oh, I want this Draven shut down. Let's chase the Draven. Guys, it doesn't matter. We've already got two kills. Three kills, even. What are the kills going to get us? What do you get after you get kills? Get an objective, okay? If we spend the next 30 seconds chasing this Draven, and we get the Draven kill, fantastic. But guess what? These guys are all alive now. We've basically just traded three people being dead for one guy being dead. You know, so it's going to be way harder for us to siege this tower, you know, um... 5v4 than it is for us to teach this tower 5v, 5v2. So I'm doing the right thing here. I'm just ignoring the play. I'm not chasing. I'm not looking for these extra plus ones. I'm an objective gamer. I want to break the base. And we end up breaking the base. We grab the wave. We grab the inhib. And uh, we reset straight away. So Now here we could have considered going topside. But it looked like my whole team was resetting into bot side. My Graves was running into bot side here. Uh, so it's, make sure that if you have TP... Right? Make sure if you have TP on rise, if you don't have TP on rise, sorry, you, you go to the strong side. Go to the side of the map that your team is on. Because right now I know that, you know, if they're playing towards my Aatrox, they're actually 5,000 gold down, you know. So it's important that I'm going to play on the same side as my team because I am the strongest player in the game. And uh, I need to be there and do the damage. Now this was a really good play. This is something you guys can um, take away for your games. If you have Baron... Um, if you just stand in the corner of the bush like this, and vice versa on this side, if you stand in the corner of the bush, you actually don't baron up the wave. So this gives the volley bear, if he was here, if he didn't take a reset, this, this would give him a false sense of security. He would think, okay, worst case scenario, Ryze comes out of here or comes out of here to kill me. So he would actually greed for this wave. I would say 9 out of 10 times he would greed for this wave because he's assuming that I'm running to the mid play, to whatever's happening. If I haven't shown this wave, I'm probably running mid, right? And uh, if I was in one of these bushes, he would see the wave getting barren. So he would completely disregard this as a threat. He would actually play towards this side of the lane because the threat is here, the threat is here, right? So we would actually literally bait him to face check us by standing on the edge of the bush and not barroning up this wave, not showing that um that we have baron and you can see how like it's just out of range so this is a really great spot you know even if the creep is here this from their perspective this is just you'd never expect somebody to be here with baron right it just seems impossible if this creep is not getting baroned up why would you know how could how could somebody be in that bush so that's just a really really nice trick that you can take away in your games uh, to cheese sort of in the in the mid to late game and when you do have the baron now again same thing i see that my whole team is setting up top side so I've recalled because I have no TP, all right? I have no ults, and I need to be there with my team. I need to help them. I need to be there to do the damage. So I go mid. It seems like nothing's happening. And we actually end up ending the game here. So basically, I see that they've overcommitted to bot lane. So here, normally, right, you would just push this wave and then go back the long way around to grab the, the bot wave tower. Uh, to defend the bot wave tower, my teammates made a nice play top. But here I see that they're playing for this dragon, right? And uh, the volley bear has no TP. 
And so it makes sense that they would start this dragon with, with the Graves being top. So I know that not only are they going to be here for the next 10 seconds while dragon is spawning, but probably another 10-15 seconds after that because they have to kill it, right? Once they're here, they're never going to instantly base. They're always going to commit for the dragon. Um, it's it's the third soul for them, uh, third, third dragon for them near soul point. So I'm actually using this opportunity to try and end the game. I'm telling, I'm actually typing to my teammates here. I'm saying, guys, if we just all go mid, we know they have to be here for another 10 seconds and then another 8 seconds to recall. If we just all go mid, we can potentially end the game. You know, they're not expecting this because look, from their perspective, this is all fog. They've seen that we've killed this wave. So what do you think they're, they're thinking? They're thinking that maybe they're coming behind us here and they're trying to fight, right? That's what they're thinking. But actually, we're playing for the end and we can creatively use a Rizal. Make sure that you use your, you can see here I held my Rizal very long just to make sure I get all the creeps and all of my champs because if we're missing one or two champions, potentially we can't end the game. And then just make sure you ping which tower you want to focus here with like hitting different towers, which is a little bit troll. And uh, yeah, we just end the game. And it's as easy as that, playing Rise. So moral of the story, just play good fundamentals and you'll win the game.